coming up in this week's episode. This week we are commencing our great eastern drive journey with the spectacular coastal road trip from Hobart to Freycinet National Park. Including an incredible day trip to the historic and stunning Mariah Island, quaint fishing villages, a local's favourite seafood experience, wine tasting with a view, the spectacular Wine Glass Bay, National Park short walks, a world-class wildlife experience, Paul's favourite off-grid campsite and so much more. Now remember to grab your free road trip itinerary quick guide from our website. And grab yourself a copy of our fully comprehensive ebook to discover the treasures of Tassie's stunning East Coast. This week is epic. Grab yourself a drink. Let's do it. whatever we can take in our backpacks without weighing it down. Hey, can you so. put this recipe for your trail mix maybe in your itinerary? Oh, that's a great idea. We should idea. put some more ginger in. Yeah, we'll we definitely only do that. one piece in there. Okay, more okay. ginger. I agree. More ginger. Mate, you seem to be eating a lot as you're going there, Jasper. Yeah, yeah I know. I just love some. And, you know, I'm going to have a look and see if we've got any chocolate chips left in the fridge. Oh, uh, yeah. Be careful of these. If you're going to eat one of these in your trail mix, you have to go nibble. Because <laughs> if you eat it all at once, there <laughs> goes the heat. Yeah. The East Coast, we are so excited. This is uncharted territory for the feel good. Yes, indeed. And for the next two weeks, we will be bringing you the absolute best that this region has to offer. Our very first stop was to a very sleepy portside town of Triabunna, a very picturesque, easy drive from Hobart. This is the perfect place to stay if you are planning a visit to Mariah Island. Yes, which we are about to do today. We are camping at the Spring Bay Hotel. Now, it's a great free camp. Basically, a large green grassy paddock that can accommodate rigs of any sizes. And whilst it is free to camp here, we've heard that they do have a couple of donation boxes in the pub that support some of the local charities. So we're gonna stop in there this afternoon, grab a drink, make a donation. Spring Bay Hotel, the community donation box. Jasper, you're doing the honours. I'm folding it. What have you got? Um, you know what that one's called? Two dollars. Twenty dollars. It's called a lobster. Lobster. There you go. There you go, lobster. Yes. Excellent. Now, when we arrived yesterday afternoon 
Our first port of call was to the famous fish van. Mm -hmm. I love this. It's straight from their boat to your belly. Yes, and really good fish and chips. So that is a hot tip from us when you come here. Yes, make sure you try the crayfish burger. Mm. Yeah. Hey, it's time for this try bun of fish and chips. Woohoo! Okay, it's looking good. How cute is this? <laughs> Not a bunch of flowers. And it's a bunch of fish and chips. Then we've got our cray rolls. Okay, it is time to get little Jasperu up and at him, and we will walk straight across the road to the National Parks and Wildlife Visitor Centre so we can grab our tickets to board the Encounter Mariah Island Ferry. Here we go. We have had such an adventure of a day mm -hmm. here at Mariah Island. Now it does form part of the World Heritage Convict properties here in Australia. There are in fact 11, five of them are located here in Tassie. Yes. We are hoping that we're gonna to get to tick all five of them off our list. As a day trip, this is an awesome experience. I think because it just ticks so many boxes. Oh, it does. There is wildlife in abundance. You get to enjoy the beautiful ocean on that ferry ride over. You're immersed in this incredible Tasmanian wilderness. And of course, the history is fascinating. And you are out in this incredibly fresh island air. I mean, it certainly <laughs> makes you feel alive. Once you get here, you can choose from a number of walks. There are short walks that start from about two and a half kilometers mm -hmm. up to about five, all the way to walks that include a 40 kilometer hike. Yes, so you really get to choose your own adventure. Selfies. Now, we picked a couple of the shorter walks to do with Jasper, and the first one was over to the Fossil Cliffs, which really gave us a great perspective of the changing environments on the island, breathtaking views out over the ocean, and the Fossil Cliffs were incredible. What's amazing is that at first you're just trying to find one fossil, and you just can't see them, and then all of a sudden you find your first one, and there's literally hundreds of them that have taken 290 million years to form. Yeah, just amazing. Mm. The walk back then through to the Darlington site, which really is the heart of the island and was the original convict settlement with these incredibly preserved buildings. It's so lovely to spend some time and meander through the village. You can access many of the buildings that have been set up with lots of interpretation, lots of interactive items as well for you to really get a grasp of how the island has evolved over the years. Now you don't have to walk. There are mountain bikes on the island that are for hire or you can bring your own. Yep. It is still very hilly so either way you're gonna feel it. Yes you will definitely feel it that's for sure. Now the second walk we did was down to the Painted Cliffs and again it's quite an easy walk although you are navigating some of the island's hills. The breathtaking views across that stunning beach with the beautiful white sand and then this crystal clear turquoise water, that was such a surprise.
Wow, I think next time we would pack our snorkel gear. Mm. Uh, you are welcome to snorkel. The entire area is a green zone and a protected zone, so the sea life is abundant. Mm. Of course, their mascot here is the wombat, and we were fortunate to see a few of these little guys getting around. One particular having a nice snooze under the tree, wasn't that awesome? Yes, that was a definite tick off the bucket list for me to see the beautiful wombats. And as you mentioned, Paul, the wildlife is in abundance. There is so much wildlife spotting to be done here. Now, if you don't wanna come for a day trip, you can come and stay. You can bring your own tent and camp in one of the two campgrounds on the island, or you can take up some of the bunkhouse dorm style accommodation within the Darlington mm. historic buildings. There are no food or beverage options on the island though, so you need to be fully self-sustainable, whether you are coming to mm. camp or whether you are coming for a day trip. I think that would be awesome next time, would be to bring our swags or get a dorm overnight and tackle some of those longer walks, mm -hmm. maybe in a few years when Jasper's uh, feeling a little bit more active. Yes, climb at Mount Moriah at 709 metres tall. Awesome. All in all, this is a fabulous day trip. I mean, you mm. could come out here for four or five hours, mm -hmm. but I think do plan to come out here mm. for the entire day so that you can not only immerse yourself in the environment, see a lot of the island, but also take that time to sit mm. on many of the lookout points that are scattered throughout the walks to enjoy calm down, breathe in the air, relax, take a moment. Oh, and reflect on the incredible stories this island has to tell. Another great use for your ground dogs. If you've got one of these upright clotheslines, we found that the little rings that come on the end to secure it into the ground have all come undone. So we use our ground dogs. This is one of the hook collars. I just drill it in and it just holds it nice and tight in place. There's not a chance that it's going to fall over in a breeze. Not going anywhere. This is a picture perfect day and that backdrop is incredible. We are staying a couple of nights here at the sleepy little bayside village of Swansea. Mm -hmm. Overlooking Great Oyster Bay out to those incredible peaks of Freycinet National Park. And there are a number of options within a 15 or so minute drive from the town centre for you to stay with your caravan or camper. Our suggestion would be to jump onto wiki camps and find the right site for you. Now in town are some beautiful old heritage buildings including Morris's General Store, the Commercial Bank of Australia and a local history museum that is worth a look as well. Now, we were tipped off by some local Tasmanians to actually stay here in Swansea because of its proximity to Mel Shell's Oyster Shack. 
what an awesome experience this was. It was such a great lunch. This place is cute, it's quirky, and it is renowned for some of Tassie's best seafoods. It is where the locals go to buy their oysters. What we loved was being able to cook up our own lunch, our delicious prawn skewers at the table, while we enjoyed a glass of wine from the winery that is literally around the bend on the river and Jasper kept himself busy happily playing in the playground which meant we were able to just kick back and really relax and enjoy this environment. It is a fantastic location. I have to say the oysters were incredibly good and a shout out to Marcus who looked after us for giving us the perfect tip on how to cook those skewers absolutely spot on. Oh my gosh, look at that. There we go. Completely just flipperoo. Mm -hmm. And that guy flipped over as well. Perfect. <laughs> Two years to grow. Two seconds to go. That should be this way. Oh my god, this is so good. You'd come back to Tassie just for this. You are. Awesome. Cheers. And the Riesling, the pairing partners made in heaven. Such an awesome experience. Mm. We loved everything about this. Yeah. Okay, right now we're gonna get the van hitched up and make our way to one of Tasmania's most famous wineries. Mm -hmm. And it is on the way. We're headed to Coles Bay, which is the gateway to Freycinet National Park. The gateway to Freycinet. <laughs> our normal routine when we're doing a podcast sort of half whispering because uh, Jasper's over there fast asleep crawled into our bed and Katie still in her pajamas don't let half. the top fool you <laughs> all right Whew, here we go 
This incredibly stunning location is known as Friendly Beaches. It's located within the Freycinet National Park. We've set up camp here for a few nights off grid. We absolutely love this location. Oh, it's so easy to understand why this is a favorite, not only with visitors to Tassie, but the locals. This is a super popular camping spot. A really good tip from us would be to arrive at least mid-morning to try and better your chances of snagging a spot. We lucked out yesterday afternoon rolling in really late at 5 p.m. and picked up the very last site available that would accommodate the size of our van. Yes. Now while it is free here you do need to have a National Parks Pass to come and camp here and that's really easy to get. You can either jump online like we did or you can visit any one of the National Parks and Wildlife Visitor Information Centres to grab yourself a pass. There's loads of different options depending on your travel arrangements. We got the two month vehicle pass. I think it's called a holiday pass. It set us back $80 and that does us for every single national park that we visit during our time here in Tassie. Now you do have to be self-contained, mm. fully self-sufficient to camp here. There are drop toilets. There are no showers, but as they say, a swim is as good as a shower when you're camping. <laughs> somewhat saltier <laughs> now we are going to head out today there are some more campsites further south within the national park they do have a ballot system for the most popular campsites down there that runs through to the 10th of february we're a little bit early for that but we are going to call into the visitor center and see if we can perhaps snag ourselves a booking if not there are other camping options in and around coles bay i can't wait to get out and do some walks in this epic national park there are so many different things that you can do depending on your fitness levels and also your desire to be walking up a thousand steps and down into beautiful wine glass bay we've got a few on our agenda to do with jasper can't wait to explore can't wait to check it out now as you can see it is an absolutely bluebird blue sky day it is a bit cool to start with this morning but it is going to fine up to be around about mid 20s so absolute pearl awesome we should get out there let's do it When you let a five-year-old get their own breakfast. Butter and um, Nutella. Butter and Nutella. Sounds yeah. very nutritious. Healthy start to the day. <laughs> Here we are at the Big Four I Luca on Freycinet in Coles Bay. This is a superb location if you want to explore the National Park. It sure is and they offer loads of options for accommodation, powered and unpowered campsites. The unpowered area is a really beautiful Aussie bush environment and all of the powered sites offer great views back out over spectacular Great Oyster Bay. They also have a couple of different cabin style options for you if you're not traveling with your RV. All right, there's also a really great playground area for the kids and an awesome camp kitchen with open air seating, whether you want to sit inside or outside, a couple of barbecues. Alternatively, you can walk the 50 meters next door to the local pub, grab a good meal there and a couple of beverages. There's also a coffee shop, a bakery, and a really good fish and chippery. Yes, the seafood is amazing here in Tassie. And just a short drive over to Coles Bay Village, there are more cafes and a convenience store. Our tip would be to grab yourself a pizza from mm. Geograph. It was delicious, wasn't it? Fantastic. 
Of course, the main highlight here is Freysenay National Park, and it is literally only a five minute drive from the campsite here around to the main visitor information center. Make sure you stop in there first. You can grab all the information on all the different walks you can do, ask any questions from the rangers, and there are some incredible interpretive boards in there that talk about the history, the culture, and of course, this spectacular environment that makes up the jewel of the east coast of Tasmania. Mm -hmm. Now you can also get your National Parks Pass there if you haven't already ordered that online. And you can also book the tent and powered caravan sites within the National Park. Now we drove in to check out the powered camping area and we would definitely recommend if your vehicle is under 17 feet to go and camp in there. Our bunk van, we would definitely not fit in there. Now there are a number of different walks and hikes that you can do that include the incredibly experienced and slightly dangerous climb or scramble up the granite boulders to Mount Amos. We chose the much more family friendly wine glass bay lookout. Mm awesome yeah this would definitely be our number one recommendation if you can only do one experience in the national park do this walk Wine Glass Bay, truly breathtaking. This is regarded as the jewel on the east coast of Tasmania. And I mean, we're here on a cloudy overcast day, mm -hmm. a blue sky day. I honestly do not think it would matter. It is truly spectacular here. Oh, it sure is. And it's one of Tassie's 60 great short walks and one of many that you can do here in Freysenay National Park. We've chosen the Wineglass Bay Lookout Walk. It is roughly a three and a half kilometre return circuit. It is graded as a level three moderate. And that is because, of course, your head headed up the granite mountain to the lookout. There are roughly around 500 I stopped steps. stopped counting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you do have to walk up to get up to this point. But knowing that the walk is mostly downhill the entire way back certainly makes getting up here a lot easier. You can extend from this point if you want to, to walk down onto the beach of Wineglass Bay and that would be absolutely spectacular. You do, however, have to go down and then back up an additional 1,000 steps. Each way. Yeah. yeah. So not for us today, but it is certainly stunning being able to stand up here. I mean, this is one of Tassie's most photographed mm. natural landmarks wow. and it truly is spectacular. So beautiful. It really is, you know, it has a, a dark history named Wineglass Bay uh, because of the whaling that was taking place here. They say that the bay resembled a glass of claret. Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard to picture that. Total contrast in what we are looking at here. I think the lack of development is what makes this place so breathtakingly beautiful. Long may that last. We are gonna uh, enjoy this view for another half an hour. Just take our time, breathe in this fresh, cool Tassie air. <laughs> It is truly stunning. A really awesome experience. I think if you could pick a blue sky day, that would make it all that much better. For now, we're going to head over to what was the absolute highlight of our time so far here on the East Coast, 
and stay tuned to the end because we will be giving you a sneak peek into next week's episode. For now, look after yourself, look after your family. And happy trails. We are saving the best to last this week. We've just experienced the Wine Glass Bay Cruise. It is one of the six Pennycott journey tours that you can do in here in Tassie. Last week we brought you the Tasman Peninsula Cruise, rated as our all time number one experience mm -hmm. as we've traveled around Australia. I think this might've just pipped it. Ooh. I know and the weather was absolutely perfect. What I love is that we had Noah Pennicott as our main host on board today. He is the son of Robert, the spitting image of his dad, Amazing. who started this business over 20 years ago. And now it is truly a world-class operation in ecotourism. Mm. They have won so many awards at both the Tasmanian and the Australian Tourism Awards for these incredible experiences that they offer. Now the boat is fantastic. It is fully enclosed, which means it does protect you from the elements here in Tassie. And it is a 150 seater, beautiful, luxurious catamaran with two seating options. The lower deck, the Vista deck is a fantastic choice for families. Upstairs, the Sky deck is an adult only deck. Now there is a licensed cafe on board, which means you can buy snacks and beverages throughout the trip even a good barista coffee and we also had a delicious lunch on board included as part of the tour so i got a brioche a cheese brioche some uh, apricot dried apple a few biscuits i think some cheese some rock melon some strawberries some grapes yum some more strawberries and some blueberries and Rocky Road. <laughs> the other thing that we really loved is the commentary. Mm. Our captain Richard was sharing the action as it happened. Mm -hmm. And if he saw something off the starboard side of the bow, that was where he headed. And that was so exciting. There were hundreds of short tail shear waters flying along and he said, well, if there's action above the water, there's definitely action below. He steered the boat out towards the action and we were met with the largest pod of dolphins even the crew had ever seen. I honestly think this has been our most amazing wildlife experience in the two years of travel around Australia. It was incredible, the numbers of dolphins and the mothers and the calves. It was just spectacular. The footage is breathtaking. Totally goosebumps. truly is incredible. We saw so many varieties of birds, white-bellied sea eagles, albatross, 
cormorants, terns. We saw Australian fur seals both basking on the cliff edges and swimming and playing in the water. And the landscape is just amazing. It is epic and rugged and more spectacular as you come out of Great Oyster Bay and onto that open ocean of the Tasman Sea. You really get a perspective that you just would not have unless you were doing this cruise. We also loved how caring the entire team were on board. Before we left the calm waters here of Oyster Bay, we were all offered some ginger tablets to help settle any upset tummies or potential seasickness that may occur as we travel out into the open sea. Mm -hmm. Now of course the main highlight of this tour is the beautiful wine glass bay and it was so awesome to have the perspective of being right there in the bay looking back to that beautiful beach. We anchored up enjoyed a good half an hour with the boat turned off enjoying the sounds of the environment and having our lovely lunch out on the deck this experience is a must do not only are you met with everything that this part of tasmania's east coast has to offer pennicott's are conservation champions and we absolutely love supporting the work they do for the environment okay so we've only got four more of their tours to do <laughs> He's hoping. next week on Family Travel Australia. This looks like the place. Seafood, hey, coffee, wine, what? <laughs> Ice cream, awesome. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails. Taking, we'll be taking Hello. the East Coast. We are so excited. This is uncharted territory for the feel goods. Sorry, I looked at you, I looked at Bear, you looked at me. <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> no, it's very good. This is uncharted territory <laughs> for the feel goods. So you're not going to look at me until uncharted territory. Okay, got it. We've been recording video for over two years. And we still haven't done it right. Okay. Mm. Uh, try and do a good one. Whew, I'm going to run out of tape. Here we go. The East Coast. We are so overexcited. <laughs> Cross the road to the National Parks Wildlife and Tasmania.
National Parks and Wildlife Tasmania Visitor Centre. <laughs> what National Park and Wildlife Tasmania? Yeah, but it doesn't house it. So head straight across the road to the National Parks and Wildlife Visitor Centre. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, she's so good when it's not her line. It's amazing. <sighs> Here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> Three, two. Okay. Oh. So, here we go. Okay, we're about to get Jasper Rooney up and at him. Head over to the, what's it called? Right. And get on board the Encounter of Mariah Island Expedition Boat. <laughs> what's it called? And then we'll be on board our Encounter of Mariah Island. I think they're called lunch in some parts of Tasmania. Hello! <laughs> this is my little tent house. Want to come in? Uh, yeah, it looks very inviting. Uh, no thanks. Hey guys, welcome back to Jasper's Great Adventures. And today we are at Triabunna. Say hi! Hi. Try banana. And um, yeah, I got everything set up here. Look at that view. Not very much good view, is there? This track requires boulder scrambling and some extremely steep sections. You may die. All right, let's go. Hi back there. Oh jeez. Oh, can't, can't feel these these rivels in it, Jasper. Look at that. That's amazing. Let's say if his name was John Williamson. John Williamson is here. There you go, John, if you're watching. This is a tree dedicated to you. Do you think it's safe? Look at that. <laughs> Okay, everyone just breathe in. Whoa, whoa, run, Jasper! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, are you right? Phew! That was close. Yeah. This is amazing. Hey guys, welcome to Friend. Welcome to Friendly Beach. <laughs> Wait up! Okay. <laughs> Holy dooly! Is that a bleeper? <laughs> Goes like this. Mm, 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 mm. Then you get your knees going. <laughs> Head down. Is that alright? Do we need to call help? <laughs> I think I did my knee. <laughs> Bye. 